Welcome to A Novel Console, your weekly podcast where we talk about books, games, food, and stuff that caught our attention during the week. My name is Chris, and with me is my beautiful co-host and wife, Keridan. Hello! How are you doing today, Keridan? I'm all right. How are you? <laughs> I have a massive headache. Oh, do you really? <laughs> no, oh. but... <laughs> a, 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 I know you just went through a headache, but... Yes, it's because of that. It's because this computer fucking sucks sometimes. But the good thing is that our guest for this week helped get shit moving and... <laughs> He's here. He's the host of one of my new favorite podcasts that actually has dethroned Get Played. I haven't listened to Get Played at all this year because of his podcast. Um, this is Dave from Tales of from the Backlog. Hey, thank you, man. And I think you're giving me too much credit, both on the podcast front and on the tech support Aww. front there. <laughs> <laughs> See, the thing is that I, I don't fuck around too much with these e headphones because I use the ones that Karen are is using. So I don't change the settings, but sometimes I accidentally do. And when I do, I don't remember where, what they were. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where to put them back in. But hey, uh, thank you for, for coming on the show. We really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Thank yes, you thank for the you. invite. Yeah, thank you too. <laughs> so if this is your first time or 132nd time coming into the show, welcome. We're glad you're joining us for an episode of A Novel Console. We hope you stick around, have some laughs, and maybe find some new things to enjoy. If you want to reach out to us, you can do it on our socials, which is basically at A Novel Console on every platform, or you can email us directly at anovelconsole at gmail.com. Or if you would like to support the show, you could do it at patreon.com slash novelconsole. Keridan. Please tell your friends about the show, because sometimes they listen when you do that. Sometimes. Also, please leave us a review wherever you can leave a review for podcasts. They help us be more discoverable, even if it's a bad review. Bad reviews make me want to read it more sometimes, or listen to it more, <laughs> in this case. Um, <laughs> hey, I uh, we, we get bad reviews at work all the time. I'm like, man, these people Sick. really think highly of us. Um also, we have a Discord now. If you'd like to join, email us to request the link or look for the pinned tweet on our Twitter. Yes. Yeah, because it is a pinned tweet, right? Yes. Okay. I, I, it wasn't I, for a long time. I am, I am not undertaking another 30-day challenge because I failed horribly at it. Posting every day sucks. It, it sucks, too, because like, you go in so strong for like the first four days, and then it's day 10, and you for, totally forgot the thing existed. Oops. Yeah. So I, I tried to line it up with like uh, the month of December so I could hit like the 25th on Christmas. And then I hit the 25th like on the 1st of January. <laughs> I'm like, damn, I kind of fucked that shit up. Hey, that's pretty good. Yeah. So, Dave, uh, we usually uh, quote unquote interview our guests. Uh, we want to ask them a couple of questions every time they're here. Uh, the first mm -hmm. question that we have is what's your favorite book? Uh, that was, uh, that's a tough question. I've had a whole like 15 seconds to think about it now. Um, let's see, uh, if just off the top of my head, the first thing that comes to mind is, uh, Stephen King's Dark Tower series, um, as my favorite. And if I had to pick a, pick a single book in that series, it's probably the second book, The Drawing of the Three. So that would be my favorite, I think. Okay. You, you ever read any of those Caden? uh no i think we all know how i feel about mr king um you're you're <laughs> slightly <laughs> extremely terrified of him what slightly extremely terrified oh it's not just that i have no patience for him <laughs> <laughs> i have no patience and i have very low fear tolerance and most of his uh. things make me afeard <laughs> We had a. That's a, the thing about the Dark Tower, though. It's not. Um, it's not horror at all. It's a. It's a fantasy but it requires Western patience. type thing. It does require patience. patience. It's like nine thousand pages <laughs> long. It's really long. Yeah. No. Nope, no. Nope. I. I tried to read fairy tale recently because I. You know, it's getting rave reviews. I'm like I can do this. Kid fantasy. Oh my God! Shoot me in the face. I, I'm like, I'm at page 100 and nothing has happened. I can't do this. I can't. It's like, it's like Persona 5. I'm on hour 10 and I'm still on the first dungeon. <laughs> That's a good segue into the next question. Yes. <laughs> what is your favorite game of all time? Now, this one's easier because I've actually thought about this one quite a bit. My favorite game of all time is Bloodborne. 
Okay, that's that's res- that's in the realm of praise the sun, right? Yes, it's praise in, the it sun. It is in the realm. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, um, and I, I thought about it because because I loved Elden Ring so much last year, but I don't I don't think that Elden Ring can dethrone uh, Bloodborne. There's a there's a special quality to that game. I think. What what is it about about Bloodborne that you like so much? It's the yeah, it's the it's the setting and the atmosphere. I think in that that's that gothic haunted like sick city that it takes place in um it's really just like an awesome setting to play a game in and then like the combat's super fun the the enemy designs are super fun and i think the story of bloodborne is the most interesting story of all the from software modern from software games so pretty pretty easy for me okay yeah i I can see that being a, a very interesting story i i i played the one that i played the most was dark souls 3 and I, yeah I, I absolutely loved it but i had no idea what the fuck was going on with the story right um, <laughs> and I, was... I i played bloodborne up until father gascon the second boss yeah yeah right i i started the game i died on that first encounter with that wolf right as soon as you wake up uh-huh i kept playing and i i didn't die all the way from there till beating father gascon i'm like I'm out. <laughs> and then I saw a video recently of the story of Bloodborne. Of Bloodborne. I'm like, huh, maybe I should try this again. Even if I find yeah, it easy, I should try it again. Oh, yeah. It's super, it's super interesting, the story. And I don't know. I found a lot of the game, especially a lot of the bosses, to be really hard. Uh, just because of the way the combat system is. You can't block or anything like that. But... Um, they do give you the tools to work with that too. So it, it ends up being my favorite, even if like, I don't know, Elden Ring's a lot bigger, a lot longer, some of the dungeons and stuff in some of that, or in Dark Souls 1, like the world design is better in that game. But like as a total package, it's got to be got to be Bloodborne for me. I, I did do a, uh, we did do a backlog of Doom recently where we pick five books and five games and let the patrons choose mm-hmm. what they want us to cover. And I, I was this close, that close, like very, very tiny, <laughs> close to uh, picking Bloodborne. But instead, nice. I went Returnal and uh, Ooh. Elden Ring. Because okay. at some point, I want to beat Returnal. And at some point, I want to retry Elden Ring to see if it makes sense now. Mm-hmm. So. Returnal is really fun, too. I love that game. That's great. It's, it's, uh, I got to the first boss, and some other game came around, and I stopped playing which is mm-hmm. the gamer curse. It's never going to be broken. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, last question before we hop into today's general topic. Uh, what's your favorite food? Uh, so this, I have a million favorite foods because I'm a, a normal person, but picking one, um, I so I lived in Korea for seven years um, and I just recently moved back. So I still like... I think about this Korean food called dak galbi, which is like a spicy um, chicken and cabbage and onion and sweet potato stir fry with this like kind of sweet and spicy sauce. And then uh, so they make it in this giant pan uh, either at your table or they make it and then bring it out to your table. And um, they, they, they cook it in front of you and then they split it down the middle and they pour just like a river of mozzarella cheese down the middle. And so you take your stir fry with your chopsticks, you dip it in this river of cheese, you wrap it up in some lettuce with some sauce and, uh, and stuff. And it's really good. It's so good. It's, it might be my favorite food ever. That That sounds pretty amazing. It does. I wasn't totally sold until we got to the river of mozzarella. (laughs) The river of cheese, right? That's the, that's the selling point. Yeah. It really is. (laughs) What did you say it was called again? It's, uh, it's called Doc Galbi, which it just means like, it's, just like a chicken, spicy chicken stir fry. I'll, I'll send you a link to uh, to what it is. Depending on where you live, you might be able to find um, a recipe that can do it. Oh, man, that sounds awesome. That just sounds like like prime garbage. It does. That sounds yeah. awesome. Cause oh, yeah. We've somewhat had Korean food, but it's like the commercial Korean food that everybody knows, like Korean fried chicken and hot pot and... Uh, Korean barbecue, but not the actual like stuff that they eat over there. 
Yeah, that was that was one of the uh, the big benefits, of course, of living over there. Like, of course, Korean fried chicken's great, and uh, like Korean barbecue's awesome. Um, but there's the 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 cuisine that like doesn't make it to the real popular spots over here is also really fucking good. So it's a, it's a great country for food. Hmm. I I wonder if, uh, if uh, Danny K knows about any of that food. Maybe he might ask him. I should ask him next time I see him. He did recommend a couple of places that we should try. Um, They are downtown ish. We don't like going downtown. We don't like the prices downtown is what we don't like. We also don't like going downtown. (laughs) There are too many one-way streets. (laughs) There are way too many one-way streets. And you get mad and then I get sad because you're mad. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I don't know who to sign downtown, man, but it is a nightmare to drive down. Especially when I used to do deliveries and I would have to get the truck to a specific building, but I had to do like four lefts to get there and one of the lefts they didn't allow trucks that that was fun oh, mm. hate downtown so uh i did yes go ahead i was gonna say i just sent you the uh the stuff on discord so when you get a chance just check it out check out that picture it is and just imagine a river of cheese in the middle of that oh boy oh <laughs> that just, oh wow yeah that Yum. looks incredible yeah, it's great. It's good stuff. That food looks incredible. Uh, we need to find a place that does it. Um, so anything else you want to talk about, about yourself, uh, any random fact, anything quirky about <laughs> Dave, something that makes <laughs> Dave happy or that helps him get up every morning. Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> I mean, we, Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so Dave has a great show, but Dave doesn't talk about Dave that much, except <laughs> I like yeah. this game or I hated this game. And, you know, I, I want to get to know Dave more because he seems like a very cool dude. <laughs> sure. Well, I appreciate it. And so, like, I, when you came on Tales from the Backlog, I told you that this podcast is centered around, like, my basically, like, my three favorite things. I like to read, <laughs> I love video games, and I love food. <laughs> so this is, like, we could just continue on any of those paths uh, forever. But it's, um, yeah, it's, like, huh. What do I even say? I, li- I like to eat. Does that make me interesting? <laughs> Very. <laughs> I mean, if you have some food apart from what you just told us that nobody has ever heard of, because I never heard of that, that you absolutely love. Mm. I mean. Okay. Did you uh, did you see the movie Old Boy by chance? No. 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 Okay. In in Old Boy, there's a se- so there's this food in Korea where uh, they they take an octopus out of a tank. Uh, like a, it's a small octopus. They take it out of the tank uh, when it's alive, and they chop it up while it's uh, alive, and they give you, they serve it to you, and they pour sesame oil and salt on top of it. And when they serve it to you, the tentacles and shit are still like wiggling around on the plate because the salt like <laughs> causes uh, action potential in the nerves and muscles and stuff. And so uh, it's moving around and like the suckers still work and stuff. Um, I, I asked if you've seen Old Boy because the guy eats one whole in Old Boy. Um, and people die trying that like every year or so <laughs> in Korea. But that's an interesting food that I, uh, that I think ta- actually tastes pretty good. It's kind of a, uh, an experience to eat. Like if you like octopus, it tastes good. It's just raw octopus. Um, I, but I, that's a, that if you want a, a food experience that I don't think many people a listening would have had that I have. Um, that's that's an interesting one. Is the the live octopus in Korea? Carolyn. They ain't no fucking way in hell. <laughs> I know. I saw your face in when I said hell. That. <laughs> this one would. You'd have to go in the restaurant without me. I wouldn't even be able to watch it. I can't. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. So you like watch them chop it up and everything? They no. They don't chop it up at your table. Okay. They bring it out on okay. the plate already but cut still, up. Oh, oh. Still, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 pizza. It's good, I, I would, I would. It's try a, it. it's a traditional, um, it's a traditional food to drink with alcohol over there, and so like, like dudes after work or like a, a, a company group will like go out and eat and drink after work, and uh, it's it's a common thing to to drink that along with um, soju or beer, I guess, like. I guess you do need to be a little bit drunk before you eat it, but every year some people die because they 
they take too big a piece and they don't chew it up enough. And then it gets like the suckers latch onto the back of their throat. <laughs> and so it's. A, <laughs> it's okay. No, you are not allowed to go in by yourself. You're not eating this because I do not trust you to chew enough. No, I'm not going to go home without you. Dying from a, an octopus sucker that you didn't chew up well enough. Jesus Revenge of the Christ. tentacle. Yeah. I can't. I, I do. I do tend to not chew sometimes. Yeah, no, you're exactly. You're not eating it, and this one's not eating it. <laughs> oh, this one's notorious for swallowing whole. I forgot to tell you, I did something weird today. What you I did? Do? Something bad today. What did you do? <laughs> so you oh. know, I was working from home. I uh, I had a, my bag of pistachios. You did not give the dog pistachios. I shelled them and I gave <laughs> no! her and I gave her two. And That's I, a choking hazard. Well, her foods, but anyway, still no, stop. And I decide to Google <laughs> are pistachios safe from dogs. Stop googling stuff. <laughs> and it says large quantities of pistachios will kill your dog. <gasps> so please keep your pistachios <laughs> hidden from the dogs. I'm like. <laughs> she's just sitting there where you are right now just looking at me waiting for me to give her more pistachios as i'm shelling them I'm like, no i'm not gonna kill my dog after i just took her to the vet how did your dog die i gave her one too surprised. many pistachios i can't yeah i i always have to look up that stuff too with my dog although i don't give him table food um but like you know, something will fall on the kitchen mm -hmm. floor or something like a, like grapes. Grapes are bad for dogs. Yes. You're not supposed to give dogs grapes. And onions. And like grapes are shaped in a way that they easily roll off the counter and mm -hmm. onto the floor. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it's always like, you know, those Google searches are never fun. <laughs> it's like, uh, are plums bad for dogs? And the Google search just says like, why the hell did you give your dog a plum? What's wrong with you? Yep. Pretty <laughs> much. The, the dog in the corner just working down a whole plum. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Man, dogs are weird. I like them. <laughs> Man. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and get into some Lord of the Rings discussion time. Oh, yeah. We need like some Space Jam music because like March Madness, basketball, Luna's and the dog is having a coughing a fit. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, you know, March Madness, Middle Earth March, basketball, Michael Jordan. Woo! See, Golem dunking. What did you just call him? <laughs> Golem. Do you just say Golem? No, Golem. Oh, Golem. Oh my God. <laughs> Gollum dunking over Smeagol. I would just like to... No, no, never mind. Just anyway. Lord of the Rings, yay. <laughs> it's March, bitches. I just realized oh, yeah. I didn't take my first bookstagram photo for the month when I got home tonight. So I'll have to take it in the morning when there's sunlight. <laughs> yay. Hey, it's okay. On my personal Instagram, I'm still posting Star Fox, and I'm probably not going to stop anytime You need to stop soon. with the fucking Star Fox. <laughs> oh, God. Love Star Fox. So, Dave, we got more questions for you. So, right. in general, I just want to throw this, whoever wants to answer it first. What do you like about the series? Because I don't think in the whole two and a half years that we've been doing this, I don't think we've ever said what we like about Lord like of the why Rings. why we like it, what we like. Yeah, what, <laughs> we li what do we like about it? Who's going to go first? <laughs> whoever wants to. I'll, I'll go first. Right. So, like, what I what I like about Lord of the Rings is, like... And it's, it's kind of like, this will make sense when I, when I get further, but it's like the thing I like about Lord of the Rings is that it's like the quintessential fantasy story for me. So like when I think of fantasy, I think of Lord of the Rings and like, that's not like a super unique take because so many fantasy authors and, you know, people took their ideas for fantasy from Lord of the Rings. Thank so, you. so it's like. You know, I, I like the Wheel of Time series, but it it started as a straight ripoff of Lord of the Rings, um, and <laughs> all of these story, all of these fantasy things that have dwarves and elves and stuff like that. It's it's all Tolkien. So, like, 
that coupled with the fact that the movies are like three of my 10 favorite movies of all time. Uh, it's, it's a, or just a really simple thing. Like I like it because it is the fantasy story. Like as far as I'm concerned, you know, it really is. It is the ultimate hero's journey, but you have multiple heroes journeys within the ultimate journey. <laughs> Uh huh. <laughs> I, I wish. Sometimes I wish we did video apart from the audio because your head almost fell off with all your nodding. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I, I was just thinking about my incident at work recently. Oh, okay. Have I talked about I that on the podcast? You, no, you have not. I have not. Okay, I am the biggest Lord of the Rings nerd. <laughs> it is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I advertise it constantly. Um, I, despite the fact that she who must not be named is evil and ruined everything, I do still appreciate Harry Potter. I like it. I do not advertise the fact that I enjoy it. Um, I have this little pencil bag. It's Lord of the Rings chibi pencil bag that I carry around at work. And my new coworker saw it and said, oh, I see you're a Harry Potter fan. I was like, um, oh, no. well, uh, yeah, but <laughs> I don't, I don't know where you got that from because I'm there's there's nothing I have on me that would tell you that. It's like, oh, that that little bag there. I was like, nope, that is not Harry Potter. And he's looking at it. And he's like, oh, I I know what that is. I'm like, oh, do you? He pointed at my fucking trash can and said, that's what that is. Oh my God. I thought I was going to pop the kid's head like a pimple. I <laughs> <laughs> Excuse you, sir. Excuse you. She who must not be named would never have come up with the ideas that she came up with if it had not been for Tolkien. Like literally everyone has taken something from this man's brilliance. Oh, I just... Anyway, what do I like about the Lord of the Rings? <laughs> What's that saying about the monkeys and the typewriters and Shakespeare? What? If you uh, it's something like if you um you know if you if you put a, a room full of monkeys with typewriters, eventually they'll write Shakespeare by accident or something like that. Is, is J.K. <laughs> Rowling part monkey? She who must not be named. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the only way she'll ever be able to read to write it. Bless her. Yeah. Just really fucking pissed me off. It pisses me off when anybody compares Harry Potter to Lord of the Rings because the Lord of the Rings is so superior. Harry Potter will never measure up. Never. Never. And this is coming from a fan. Anyway, I love that the Lord <laughs> of the Rings is all about hope and the little guy. And I just, mm -hmm. I gotta love everything about it. It is it is everything that I love about fantasy. I'm going to cry. It's so beautiful. I sh I'm being vague, but God, it's so fucking beautiful. <laughs> you want to know what I like about It's got Go ahead, Dave. I was going to say it's got it's got a lot of things that were kind of ahead of its time. It's yes. got um it's got, you know, the heroes are not big knights with swords. It's got like uh, incredible male friendships. It's got yes. people, you know, supporting each other. It's, it's just really sweet. Uh, like you said, it's really nice. You got me thinking about that. Um, and the fact that like, you know, Aragorn is one of the heroes of the story, but he's, he's not the hero of the story, which I mean, I, I assume that Tolkien took inspiration from like Arthurian legend and stuff like that. But you know, the, the story of, um, the fellowship is not a story about like one, you know, incredible knight on its adventures. It's, it's a group that, you know, fights and falls apart and reforms and stuff like that. It's just, it's so good. And they're all so humble, so humble. Oh, oh, I can't. So my, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> my favorite part of from Lord of the Rings, the thing that yes, I like you... the most about it before mm -hmm. you start crying, Carrot. Okay. It's the fighting. Oh like, my god, there are some the really fighting. epic battles. Helm's Deep takes the cake. Yes. Yep. Yes, that Forever. It, so when I first watched these movies when I was a teenager, I just felt like they all dragged so long, ah! but then when the fighting I I I English is my second language. True. Were you were you still struggling <laughs> at that point? Kind of, but okay. not really. <laughs> um as I figured out this weekend I had troubles with 
hand-eye coordination with two sticks on shooters. So I'm guessing that I was stupid at English back then. Oh, anyway, so it was a it was a drag just sitting there and watching the whole thing. But when the fights came, it was like. It was worth it because there's mm-hmm. sword swinging, sword clanging. There's pe- orcs dying, getting their heads cut off, exploding, yeah, being suicide coolest, bombers. Uh, coolest archer in any film or anything like Legolas is the best archer in yes. any movie I've ever seen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And see, I, I didn't get to see the fellowship in theaters when it was originally in theaters, um, but I did. We, we discovered it when the fellowship came out on VHS. VHS. <laughs> Uh-huh. And uh, we did get to see the two towers and the Return of the King in the theater, and I loved the the vibe and like that everyone was cheering every time Legolas did something epic when he slides down the Oliphant's trunk and is like, "Yeah, I just took down that whole thing. Oh, that was so good." Yeah. When he's on the shield sliding one. down the stairs, what? It still counts as one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's wonderful. It it is it like like the fighting is so well choreographed. It's it's so much. Fun, Every right? time Gandalf shows up to save mm-hmm. the day at the last minute, oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, the the moment in front of the Black Gate when he when he says for Frodo and then yes. the charge makes me cry, man. Every time, every, I watch time <laughs> every single time, little Merry and Pippin run after him, and then the yeah. whole crowd overtakes <laughs> yeah. them. Uh, it's amazing. So, about Mary and Pippin, like I feel like they had the highest body count at the end of that fight in at the Black Gate. They're all at waist level. <laughs> Everybody else is towering over them, so they're just like stab, stab, Bless stab. <laughs> it's like, I'm sure that each one killed about thirty to forty uh, orcs. I was gonna say orcs, but that's a different thing. Probably, time. probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, the oh, man. Like the thing is, the the fighting was translated so well into those two uh, GameCube, PS2, Xbox, Lord of the Ring games. And it, it's crazy to think that they were done by EA. Thinking about it now, it's kind of insane, but they were really, really good games. They they need yeah. a port desperate. I was, uh, I was thinking, like, when I was thinking earlier today, I was like, okay, so we're going to talk about the movies. We're probably going to talk about the books. But I want to talk about those those games for like the PS2 and the GameCube. And then the ones for Game Boy Advance also were really good. They're like little Game Boy Diablo games. Yeah. They're awesome. <laughs> yeah, they are. And uh, there's a Fire Emblem clone too. The, the, uh, is there? The Third Age on GBA is Fire Emblem. Oh, right. The Third Age. Yeah. 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 They're, man, I spent a lot of time with the Two Towers on GBA when I was a teenager. So I bought it on a trip mm-hmm. that I went to. And yeah, dude, me too. Like playing it in the car on this long <laughs> family road trip. <laughs> That's great. Listening to Good Charlotte on my CD player, <laughs> playing the Lord of the Rings game. Very nice. See, if you would have had a GBA, Karen, that probably would have been you, you, but Nickelback. Yep. And you with Avenged Sevenfold. Avenged Sevenfold was not a thing when I was a teenager. Oh, you with Metallica. <laughs> with Linkin Park. Okay. Yeah, that. Oh, yeah. Or oh, yeah. And the Offspring. I meant to say Linkin yeah. Park. Sure you did. Then Backcountry threw me off. <laughs> I do love me some Backcountry. I country. played that um, that one for the... We had it on GameCube, mm-hmm. but the, the Return of the King... I think it was the Return of the King game. Yeah. The Return of the King game where you could play through it with one character. You play through the events of the movie. It takes like five hours or something, but you unlock like 10 different characters to play through the the movie with. And so we just did that with all the characters over and over again. Cause it was so fun. Yeah. It, it's a ton of fun, dude. And I, I, I played it like what, two years ago, a year ago for the show. And I played nice. it on my GameCube with the AV cables connected to my HD TV. And I couldn't see anything and i oh yeah i still I had a blast like the brightness was turned all the way up and i still couldn't see anything <laughs> it was great it, it, they are they are a great time now yeah w- the next question that i have um i'm gonna throw it to you dave favorite character oh Ooh. um it's it's it, this might be normie answers but it, it's got to be aragorn or gandalf probably gandalf would be my favorite why are you even looking at me when you know my answer? I think everybody who's listened <laughs> regularly knows my answer. I, I'm banning that I, answer. I need to be last. No, I'm banning that answer. No, you can't ban that answer. I, I can't. give a second choice. 
You go first. Uh, I wrote the question. I, I, I don't even know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay, I like Gimli. I was about to say, I know you're going to say Gimli. How do you know I was going to say Gimli? I feel like you relate to Gimli. Except How? that you're not short. How do I relate to Gimli? You get a little hot-headed. <laughs> <laughs> and you like to drink. And you're kind of goofy. That's it. But serious when you need to be. <laughs> so I'm Gimli. Yeah. I'm six foot three Gimli. Yeah. I'll pretty much. It. That's that's pretty cool. <laughs> you can't toss me, but that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I, I like I really like Gimli, but recently having watched these movies over and over again because you have a problem. Kevin. I do, I'm sorry. You're welcome. I love Boromir. Yeah. I mean, Boromir is a good character. He really is. Great. Like when he realizes what he did to Frodo trying to take the ring away, and then he redeems himself by taking an arrow to the bladder. <laughs> that is, oh. He really focuses on that bladder arrow. <laughs> yeah. His thing is like he gets one on the shoulder, like one like underneath his heart and chest, and then the other one is just straight in the bladder. It's like that's the one that killed him, the last one. Yeah, that's that's rough. Yeah, those one of Boromir is one of the ones where like when you first experience the story, you're like, fuck Boromir, piece of <laughs> shit. Tried to steal a ring. But then like as you watch over and over again, you 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 realize that like he wasn't this like selfish, you know, asshole the whole time. And yeah, he made a mistake, and then like you said, he redeemed himself. He was susceptible to the it's ring. He had like these huge pressures from his father that he was trying to live up to. See, but but those mm-hmm. pressures you don't know about them until the third movie and unless you watch the extended editions. Cause there was, That's a good point. There was one scene be- between him and uh-huh. Faramir, and I told you, did he want to take the ring back for his dad? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I definitely think he would have been susceptible to the ring no matter what, but I yeah. think he was more susceptible because of Denethor and trying to live up to those expectations because he had oh, yeah. such insane expectations, and poor Faramir had none. <laughs> yeah when you meet when you meet his dad for the first time and see what he's all about you're like oh it makes a lot of sense yeah. why boromir was like that he's got daddy issues <laughs> yeah uh, bless his heart like <laughs> like his death in, in i cry every in the first fucking movie, time it's, it's it's a great death it's one of those heart-wrenching deaths even though you know he Kind of was kind of a dick the entire time. And the moment with Aragorn, and when Aragorn is taking his arm thingy, Bracers. Th- those things, yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> that was me kind of coughing, not crying. <laughs> it's fine. But he he died in Goldeneye twice. So Sean Bean always yeah. dies. I don't yeah. know why. He made a career out of it. He dying, really yeah. did. Have you have y'all ever seen the death scene? Yeah. Have you ever seen the funnier die skit that he did? No. Um who, what's his name? Paul Shear? Is that who he what his name is? The Paul guy who Shear? does Paul funnier Shear, die? The, the comedian. Yeah. Who's married to what's her face from Grace and Frankie? Yes. We were shook to our cores because yes. she's so beautiful and he's Paul Shear. So <laughs> And not he's Paul <laughs> he looks like a little alien um but no there's this funnier die skit that he did you you should definitely look it up where um i don't remember exactly how it goes but basically sean bean is struggling through a script and he's like so you want me to die now right <laughs> and they're like no and he just can't get past the fact that he's not dying and he keeps like acting out these scenes where he's not supposed to die as yeah it's great so that that explains mm-hmm. why he had such a normal acting path or not path like a normal, a normal what's it called uh uh role a, a natural feeling role to him in silent hill and that's because he's dead the entire time in silent hill bless his heart oh okay so he's yeah right up his alley yeah, yeah. had you watched that movie dave no uh, no i don't i don't watch horror movies so they're they're based on silent hill and they're really not that hoary. They're very good adaptations of the hoary, horary. Did, did I say hoary again? <laughs> I don't know. I'm My arse dragon it. English. <laughs> <laughs> so, Carradin, mm-hmm. favorite character, not Aragorn. It has to be Aragorn. It's not Aragorn. It's I'm always banning, Aragorn. I'm banning Aragorn. <laughs> you can't. Who's your favorite character? Aragorn. Give me another one. Another one. 
It's always Aragorn. Um, oh God. I mean, I really love Sam. Like, I, I am a firm believer that Aragorn and Sam carried the fellowship on their backs. Sam all day, every day. Sam, Sam, Sam. Yeah. So I I always said that it's Sam should have carried the ring because I think Sam would have not been corrupted because he's just so pure. That that's another reason why Sam would be second for me because of the books. Like when when he has the ring for the brief time that he does and he imagines like, you know, basically turning the whole world into a beautiful garden and I'm like, that is the most wholesome thing I've ever read in my whole life. <laughs> He's so precious. No, I... I, Then he gives it back. Yep, he does. Without a fight. Bless his little heart. Like, he, he's just like, here. (laughs) He's so pure. Frodo's so susceptible. He's a total dude. Yeah. (laughs) He's the ultimate dude. He's he's great. The part at the end where when Frodo and Sam are hugging while Mount Doom is blowing up, it's just... It's great. You want to die by... With a Sam by your side. Mm Mm-hmm. Next, uh, Dave, you told me when we finished recording uh, the Eastward episode for your podcast, which comes out this Wednesday. Um, yep. Tuesday for patrons, correct? Uh, it will come out on March 8th for everybody, March 7th for patrons of my show. Yeah. Yes. So you told me that you had a hot take from Lord of the Rings, and you told me the hot take, and it's kind of a lukewarm take. But I want you to (laughs) say it anyways. Okay. So uh, full disclosure, we recorded that episode two months ago. So I don't quite remember my hot take, although I thought of a couple of hot takes um, today. So I think the one that I told you is that the books are not that fun to read. Yeah. Or something like that. But my even hotter. (laughs) Yeah. It's it's not like a super hot take, although there are people who swear by it. And like, if you, if you get joy from reading the books, that's cool. Um, My hot take that I thought of today is that because the, you know, recently you got, we got this news that like Warner brothers wants to keep making more Lord of the Rings stuff. And my hot take is that the stories outside of the things that were actually written out into full books, full stories, I'm not talking Silmarillion. I'm talking The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Those were written out into full stories and like fleshed out fully by Tolkien. And therefore those stories are good and make good adaptations uh, or could make good adaptations. The Hobbit movies are bullshit. But um, (laughs) my hot take is that plucking random stories from the Silmarillion does not make them good just because they're from the source material. So the rings of power on Amazon sucked so bad. I hated it so much. Yes. Um, yes. It's incredibly boring. The, uh, the stories that they use in, um, the video games that are not based on the movies, those stories are not special in any way. Um, so my hot take is that new Lord of the Rings stories do not excite me at all because I don't think they're that interesting. I think there were, they were written as backstory to the world and events of the movie or the, uh, the, the, the story of the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit, but they're not meant to be their own stories made into long TV series. They're just backstory. They should stay that way. That's my hot take. Karen in his hurt. <laughs> I was I'm okay sorry. in the beginning. <laughs> now I'm not. <laughs> okay. So, so you, you brought up something you brought up actually two points. One that we might have to fight over, which is the the Lord of the Rings games, the the Shadow games, the Middle Earth Shadow games. Yeah. So like the the plot of those games is not special. What makes those games special is the Nemesis system and all of that stuff. But that's not like a that's not a story. That's not like you know that's did did you that's play e- that's emergent stuff. Did you play through the second game War all the way through? No, I didn't. No. no. Okay. Do you want to know a spoiler? <laughs> yeah, I, I you, you can go ahead. I I guarantee you I'll be fine. <laughs> okay. So it turns out the Talion ends up being one of the ring wraiths. Okay. So I like that personally. I thought that that was great. Everything that happened before that, eh. But it's it's an interesting twist, but it, do do I need to play a, a 30 or 40 hour game just to get to that? Probably not. 
Like, I'm sure the game is fun, but... Oh, the game's so like much this, fun. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure it is. But, like, th- it's kind of my point. Like, I, I think that the story of The Hobbit is really fun, and I think the story of The Lord of the Rings is really incredible. And then just, like, that stuff that's backstory should stay backstory. It doesn't need to be brought out and milked for all the money that they can get out of it. <laughs> you have something to say, Karen? I do. What? You can give your hot takes <laughs> first. What? I said you can go first. Okay, I got one more thing before we go. Oh. Uh, before, before I we go. go. <laughs> before I go. Before I go. Um, you said that you hated the Rings of Power. Yeah. Is it just because of the story? It, it's, I, I could not stay awake during it. It is so boring. Kid, and didn't your dad have the same reaction to him? Yeah, he did. Those, he was very underwhelmed. Those first two episodes were were rough. Difficult. Yeah, they were. Yeah, very I, difficult those, to watch. that's the only. I watched the first two episodes, and that's I. I did not want to watch more. It, it was just so. What it, when when you watch that intro to the Lord of the Rings, and they talk about the Rings of Power and how they corrupted the people who had them and stuff. The things that happened in my imagination there were way better than what I thought that that show was going. So. I liked it better when it was left to my imagination, if that makes sense. Like, I don't, I don't need to see the story behind that stuff. I can, you know, I, I, I get it. See, I, I like that for the most part, the one thing that I absolutely hated, and I hated it with a passion, was Galadriel's boner for killing Sar- Sauron. That's not Galadriel. It makes no sense once you see that whole first season and how she wants to kill him the entire time. And then you watch mm-hmm. the movies and Sauron's still alive and she just doesn't care. Like what the fuck happened? I don't know. I guess maybe we'll find out in season two. <laughs> she became a mother and didn't care anymore. Oh, her husband was, yeah. her husband's dead, but he's standing right next to her in the, in the movies. <laughs> they definitely took some creative liberties. We mm. will uh, not disagree with that. The, and they shouldn't take those liberties. Like, I, I'm cool right. with. Okay. I'm cool with um, uh, Iran Deer, right? The Puerto Rican elf. I fucking love it. It's great. He looks like all of my cousins put together. I'm in cool one with person. him, but I don't think he's a great actor. <laughs> he, you don't think he was a great actor? No, <laughs> I really don't. I, I, the, as much as the Heartfoots annoyed me, they were fine. Did you say Heartfoots? What were they? Heartfoots. What? what? <laughs> uh, okay. Let me, let me amend my hot take. Cause, <laughs> cause you just brought up like the other, the other side of, of that. Um, I, not to say that all of the stories that are in the Lord of the Rings backstory or universe are not worthy of getting their own shine, but I don't think that Amazon or whoever, or Warner Brothers, or whoever is going to do them well. So it's like a combination of like a story that like is made of bare bones and proper nouns and stuff like that. And I don't trust Warner Brothers or whoever else to flesh it out in a way that's interesting. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's like half and half, I guess. I I also don't think that Amazon should have their hands on anything. I think they should go away as a corporation. (laughs) Because they are yeah. f- terrible. Karen, what's your hot takes? Because I, 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 I just think that the game, games are, are great. I, I don't mm-hmm. hate the story on the games. I think it's fun. My biggest hot take that really upset TikTok and actually had people like borderline bullying me. Oh, yeah. I remember um, that. Yeah. I think Frodo is a fucking pussy. <laughs> I... Oh. I, <laughs> <laughs> I really... <laughs> Don't love Frodo. The more I have watched, the more I have read, and I have watched and I have read so many times. Every weekend. Okay. I really don't care for for Frodo. Bless his heart. <laughs> I appreciate. I was, was going to ask you, like, oh, is it is it Elijah Wood? And because he's laying it on pretty thick in the movie, it is largely Elijah Wood, largely. But I also am not a huge fan of Book Frodo. I do like Book Frodo better than okay Elijah Frodo. 
bless gotcha. him. But yeah, he God, he's so dramatic and whiny. And I know that the <laughs> ring is a heavy burden, but you keep signing up to do this <laughs> shit. And then you're being a fucking pussy about it. And you're basically trying to hand it over to the enemy every five seconds. Let <laughs> Sam carry it. I, I know it'll fuck him up a little bit, but I think he'd still be so much stronger than you. He has a better soul than Frodo. <laughs> <laughs> I just, God. And then at the end, it's like, oh, I'll carry this wound with me forever. Let me go to the undying lands. I can't take it anymore. I'm just like, Sam was there with you the whole fucking time, bitch. He's fine. <laughs> Sam's going. Sam's just gonna go back. He's gonna have a drink. He's gonna dance a little bit. <laughs> See, Bang, Rosie. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I I do have a little argument against your hatred for Frodo and that part where he got stabbed and he has a wound. They did say that that blade started corrupting him from the I inside. I know. So I know. His soul, and Dave is going to appreciate this word, is tarnished. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> so. I mean, yeah. I'm, I just have I'm no sure, patience for his stupid ass. I'm sure that, yeah. that an ethereal pain would hurt way more than <laughs> a physical pain. <laughs> Here's here's a hot take ranking for you, Chris, now that you got me thinking about it. All right, in the in order of how good they are, Lord of the Rings media, okay? Movies number 1, mm -hmm. games number 2, books number 3, Ring of Power TV show, <laughs> distant number 4. Oh god. I, I agree with that. Carradin would be movies, music, games, books, and the rest. Oh, I suppose music. If we want to talk about music, like the the soundtrack for the the Lord of the Rings can't be can't be fucked with. Oh That's no, great. never. Howard Shore is everything. The minute I found out they were not having Howard Shore <laughs> compose <laughs> the Rings of Power, I'm like, man, this is this gonna be a shit show. <laughs> Mm. Fucking Bear McCreary, who the hell is that? Or is That's that even bad, his name? Well, Bear McCreary, Bear McCreary uh, makes makes good soundtracks too. Um, he did but the the, the God Rings? of War games. Okay, but really, Howard Shore, Howard Shore is. I mean, Howard, it's it would be like taking John Williams away from Star Wars. It doesn't make sense. That's true. Yeah. See, I it I I am sick of listening to the Lord of the Rings soundtrack because every time we go to get. <laughs> something at the store Carradine has a blast <laughs> on the radio so the we have like the March of Isengard going off and we're just gonna go fucking get cheesecake at the Publix. last March of the Ents <laughs> sir <laughs> no the one with the with the anvil and the thing that the oh I know which one the the one that <laughs> the one where we watched the concert where and we, I was infatuated by because there was watched, just <laughs> um Lurts being pulled out of the exactly pit. that one. So <laughs> oh yeah, w we saw the concert in New York a few weeks ago, and they played that song. And there was one dude that was in the whole <laughs> band just to hit a hammer against an anvil. That Orchestra? was his whole. That's nice. all he did the entire nice. night. I hope that guy got paid a thousand dollars for that concert. I, right, yeah, good for him. <laughs> he he should have gotten paid more than the chick who sang. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, no, it's epic. It's Gives like, me fuck, chills I could be every doing that. fucking time. Every time. Did you say that I would rank the games above the books? If you played the games. <laughs> if you didn't get motion sickness, you would. I don't know about that. Mm. I don't know. Mm. I I can agree with Dave's hot take that the books are not fun i'm not gonna say not fun uh but i have admitted i can't remember if i admitted on the podcast or not i know i've admitted it on instagram that if i had read the books before i saw the movies i don't know that i would have cared to watch the movies but mm. i i started with the movies because my dad was a fan and then he you know ripped the carpet out from under me when i found out he never fucking read the books devastated me but he <laughs> he had it on vhs and he was watching it one weekend that we were with him and my sister and i saw mary and pippin rolling down the hill with the carrots and the mushrooms and we thought it was the funniest mm -hmm. thing in the world 
and we were hooked. But yeah, if I tried, and I actually, you know what, I'm I'm somewhat lying. I did try to read The Hobbit before realizing that it was linked to these movies that my dad was just randomly playing one weekend. And then he told me later. So I was like, oh, he read these books my whole life. It's like two years ago. And then he told me. <laughs> that, he never night, read them. that night she found out that her dad had never read them. So she was so upset. devastated. <laughs> like she's like, <laughs> like he was trying to tell her something important. And she's like, no, I got to go. And she just went and curled up into bed <laughs> and just stayed there the entire weekend. <laughs> so sad. But it's okay. <laughs> I'll forgive him. Eventually. Yeah. Someday. Yeah. One of these days. Yeah, maybe on a step. The Hobbit book is, uh, Hobbit book's a lot of fun to read. It is. I mean, it was written for children, so it, it's, it's a lot right, more fun. Right, that's why. <laughs> yes. Lord of the Rings is rather dense. And, uh. It's, it's very, very wordy. Time consuming, yes. It is wordy. I mean, yeah. I. Yeah. I started reading, I started rereading the Silmarillion, what, like a month before the Rings of Power came out? I'm still only halfway through it. Because Ooh, I mean, you just have to take breaks. The, the, <laughs> yeah, the with, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the Silmarillion just like a textbook? Like, it's not meant. It's not a novel. Yes, and, so. and very much in in the beginning, it's very much like reading the Bible. Oh, fine. Because it's literally <laughs> creation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a doozy. It's fun. Uh-huh. I mean, if you're really, really into Lord of the Rings and you want to learn about the lore and stuff, it can be entertaining, yeah. but in, in small bursts. <laughs> yeah, if you want to. I mean, like, my preferred method of that is to just go read someone's Wikipedia summaries <laughs> about, like, what, what Gandalf and Sauron are instead of reading Tolkien's way of writing that. Bless him. That, that is my preferred method of uh, research. <laughs> just go to Wikipedia, read a little bit. I'm good. Uh-huh. I know everything now. I am all knowing. All knowing. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't really have a hot take. Like I, I like the series for what it is. I think uh, I think Sam should have carried the ring. Uh, but I really don't have a hot take. I think the games are fun and the story in the games it's it's decent. I think we can all agree um, that the Hobbit films are are shit. But that's not a hot yeah. take. You but you. I, well, no, I think it's a hot take that you did actually enjoy them when you watched them. Oh, no, I did, yeah, I did enjoy them. Then again, if there's movement and colors and sounds, <laughs> I will enjoy it. <laughs> so. It's not to say now, I didn't enjoy it, but... The first the first Hobbit movie was pretty fun. Pretty fun. Not not a great movie, but fun. The second one was o- okay. Like, <laughs> But I, I came out of the second movie being like, well, I don't know about like the direction this is going. The third one is awful. It is a bad movie. It's a bit of a, yeah. It's, it's, um, uh, I, yeah, I was, it, it, it's, it's rough. It's I was mad as fuck as the, at the end of the second one. You were mad. <laughs> think about those of us who watched it in the theater and had to wait another year or two. I think it was just a year. A year. A year. I was like, what the fuck? And you were sleeping like right that's, behind me. <laughs> that's what they get. Like, as soon as they said they were going to make three movies out of The Hobbit, I was like, this, is, this isn't this is going to end well. The, the book is like 130 pages. They can't make three movies out of this, three good movies. So I think that's how it turned out. I think I saw on some website that they were going to make three movies, and they were saying on the article that the, fir- the ha- half of the first movie was just going to be shots of the food that they described so well in the book. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't. I... And for as long as those movies are, not enough singing and uh, enchanting in the movie. No. I just had a... Didn't that Goblin King have like a, sing- uh, like a, a singing He, he had a really epic song. Yeah, he did. It was great. It was... It was, it was <laughs> I, like, I... I I don't remember the words of the song, and I don't remember how the song goes or anything. But for some reason, when I think of him singing, I think of Scar singing. Oh my gosh, be prepared. Yeah. I can't. Is that accurate? Like, I I mean, sword, not really, I guess, maybe. Be prepared is better. (laughs) But I I just thought about a TikTok that really pissed me off. Um, There's this company that I actually used to work with fairly closely uh, in the bookstagram world. And they've cut ties with everybody now. But they recently posted a fucking TikTok of Tauriel. Okay? You know, the character who's not in the books at all. Entirely made up for the movies. um, Saying, (laughs) man, I really wish that there were a feminist version of The Lord of the Rings. I'm like, number one, this is The Hobbit. Number two, she's not a character. 
guess what the fucking book was. You might not know, Dave, but I know you're familiar with it at least. That she was saying was a feminist version of the Lord of the Rings. I, I don't know. Fucking Court of Thorns and Roses oh. based on Beauty and the Beast. Piss me <laughs> the hell off. Like, are you, are you serious right now? Anyway, Tauriel, I love her, but... All right, so I have one last question before we wrap things up. Um, whoever wants to answer first, again, can take it. What do we want to see happen with Lord of the Rings? I know Dave is a bit of a skeptic about this whole process <laughs> that's going on, but I don't know. What, what do you guys think? I, I guess my answer is going to be simplest, so I will say it first. I want them to let it rest and not milk the ever loving shit out of it. And maybe uh as we get to higher when we get to 8K TVs and stuff, maybe touch up the films so they look great on those new screens, but I don't want reboots of The Lord of the Rings. I'm not going to watch a new Amazon Prime series about <laughs> the story of something from the backstory I want them to let it rest. Uh, that's what uh, you know. What I want? I want a new video games. That's what I want. Yes. Do the do the fucking like do the events of the movie again? Remake the ones from the GameCube and the PS2, uh, and just make them with modern, you know, modern game stuff, graphics, gameplay, all that stuff. I'll play that. That's what I want. Make it a, a, a super linear experience, just like in the, the movie yeah. is, and have exactly like at some point break into all three stories: uh, the ones with Merry and Pippin, the ones with Frodo, the ones with uh, Aragorn and the guys. And yeah, that would. I, I don't want. I don't want a big open world Lord of the Rings game. I want to play through the events of the movie, just like those old games. That that's what I want. That's yeah. Um, have you heard about the Gollum game? Ah. Uh. Yeah, I, I think it looks rough. Horrifying. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be very good. It, it's it's a little bit disappointing because this apparently this Hogwarts Legacy game is fantastic. And I just wish they would put the same effort into a Lord of the Rings game. Because, you know, the Middle Earth yeah. games, they play like a better Assassin's Creed with a Nemesis system. Mm -hmm. But they don't have the whole polish. And they copyrighted the Nemesis system so other people can't do it. And then they're not doing it themselves. Yeah. So that's awful. I, um, I think that the copyright is almost up. So I hope so. So we might start seeing so. that soon. And I hope so. Because that, man, I, I would take a space shooter, like an on rail space shooter with a Nemesis system. I would absolutely love mm -hmm. that. Put, put that into like any, you know, open world action game. Just put the Nemesis system in; it instantly becomes more fun. Yeah, yeah, like a, a open world Grand Theft Auto style game with a Nemesis system. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Kid? And what you want to see happen in the future? Um, well, Warner Brothers has announced the titles for their upcoming Lord of the Rings movies, and here they are: The Lord of the Rings, Two Lords, Two Rings, The Lord of the Rings, Rohirrim Drift, Lord and Rings, Lord Five, <laughs> Lord and Ring Six. Ring 7, The Fate of the Lord, L9, and Lord X, or Lord 10. Um, <laughs> I, I just happened to see that in my last minute Facebook scrolling before we started. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I got to save this shit. That's amazing. That's good. I can't. I've seen that so many times before, but having it read out loud makes it so much better. Right, right. I, I can't wait for it. But when you got to Rohirrim Drift, I was like, hey, wait a second. That sounds kind of cool, but hold on now. Um, <laughs> Two no. lords. <laughs> so yeah. I, I said on last week's episode that I, I read the article and uh, uh, said that they were in talks with Peter Jackson and uh, Fran Walsh and Philippa Boyens. I think if those three are involved, there is a lot more hope than there was with the Rings of Power. Even if those three are also responsible for the Hobbit movies, I would argue that the mm -hmm. Hobbit movies are still better than the Rings of Power. And this is coming from someone who tried to set aside all of my expectations and knowledge and appreciate the rings of power for what it was because I just love the Lord of the Rings and I'm happy that they're mm -hmm. giving me more. My second thing, 
I do also feel like I would have been okay with them letting it rest if they kept throwing merch at me. And they do continuously drop merch every once in a while that relates to the films. I, I could have lived with that. Um, but since mm. this is going to happen, we need something with Tom Bombadil. We have Tom Bombadil oh, deserves that. Oh, didn't you see what Burger Champ posted on Discord? <laughs> what did he post? That's a hot take. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. You're going to hate this. Oh, don't tell me. I hated it. Let me... Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. And I don't think it's real. So don't worry. Like, you can okay, you good. can sleep easy. Okay. Oh, uh, where the hell is it? Mm, uh, fake news. Uh, is it on pickups? No, it's not. You talking about the um, the musical? Yes. What? Yeah. There was a there was a tweet that looked official, like mm-hmm. it used official language, and it said that there was a, a, a Tom Bombadil Broadway show being developed what? starring James Corden. What? Starring James Corden. James Corden? No. And it's the the entire internet just went like nuts. Th- this is the opposite of what we want. <laughs> Nobody wants this. Oh, and then it, I think it's fake. So yeah, I, I hope I can't find it, but yes, that what he said. Yeah, what Dave just said. Okay, <laughs> that. I'm gonna pretend that it's fake, no matter what, even if it is real. I'm gonna pretend. Yeah. I don't want them to make him into a joke because he's not a joke. He's wonderful, Ooh. and he got he got looked over, and it was awful. Anyway, um, so I want that. I. Uh, <laughs> I would love a Baron and Luthien movie. I think that would be beautiful. I also am really fascinated by Morgoth in general. If if we could see like true evil, because Sauron is a pussy compared to Morgoth. Like, <laughs> I want some real, real bone chilling Middle Earth evil. I want to see Angoliant because mm-hmm. she makes she look like a, like Our- a little, little bitch. Or since you know more than I do about the stuff, I still don't know that much. (laughs) Are there like any eldritch like beings? What the fuck is an eldritch like being? Oh, okay. (laughs) Are there any? Uh, Because the Balrog kind of is, but not really. I am. I'm trying to think. Maybe I don't remember. You know, fifth grade me was a lot more knowledgeable than almost 32-year-old me. Hmm. I was I was deep in it. I could sit down and draw you a whole fucking tree of the entire world, basically. It was insane. I was nuts. <laughs> I don't know how my family didn't think to go get me tested for something. For <laughs> nuts? So, yeah, some kind of crazy. We don't know. We don't know what. We don't know what she needs a test for. But look, look, just look at this. Yeah, we need something. There's something not quite right here. They just thought I was smart. I'm like, no, this is really like hyper obsessive behavior, y'all. <laughs> anyway. Like they see your diary is written in Elvish and they think it's Satan language. I mean, <laughs> that's not far from the truth. I also had, I had, to make it even worse, Mickey bought me... Um, Your mother-in-law? My, my stepmom. Your stepmom? Your mom is my, my mother-in-law. <laughs> Your yeah. mom, when I was in fifth grade, bought me... No, my, my, my stepmom fried. bought me one of those, uh, <laughs> one of the journals from Harry Potter, the one that when you open it screamed, like one of the books from the forbidden section of it the screamed. library. It screamed. It had like a little... Speaker box on it. I mean, you know, but yeah. <laughs> and I, oh, that's yeah, horrifying. I would draw Elvish in it. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> what was I saying? What I want from these films? So yeah, I want Tom Bombadil. I am not opposed to um, Don Marshall's pitch for a Thran Daddy film. Thran Daddy film. Thran Daddy. Okay. Sexy Daddy Thran <laughs> Woo! Leave I want to know That's Lee Pace, what that right? dragon did to him. Yes. Leave him alone. Keep going. No, he's so beautiful and so gay, and I love him so much. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, so evil and Tom Bombadil and Thranduil. Mm-hmm. And Baron and Luthien. Yeah, and Baron and Luthien. Yep, okay. I want all those things. Okay, those are those are good things. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want more games. Like if mm-hmm. if I could get a Lord of the Rings. Warriors game, I would be so happy. Oh yeah, that'd be a good one too. Yeah. Oh, like being in Minas Tirith or in in Helm's Deep and 
just killing a thousand orc, I would be so happy. And then like the yeah. the big boss is like the pink lumpy dude. I can never remember his yeah. name. <laughs> <laughs> the one that throws the heads. Yeah, him. Yeah, the lump the lumpy one. Yeah. <laughs> lumpy one. <laughs> Oh, we can throw Azog in there for some fun. Poog, my favorite. Poog? Poog the Defiler. Huh? He's from the Mordor game. Oh. <laughs> like it's, what? It's, it's, there's there's a Who's that? <laughs> there's an org called Poog the Defiler and it's P U G H. I just thought of another movie. <laughs> we could have a movie about the Ents and the Entwives and how they were lost. That'd be so cute. The movie would take forever. It would take forever. <laughs> oh, oh, can God. you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine that? <laughs> it would be a whole movie of them having one conversation. Yes. <laughs> yes. The whole movie's an oh, entish. That would be amazing. Oh, God. I keep thinking of all these things. It would be really cool to see, um, like, behind the scenes of Saruman being corrupted. That, that would be that would awesome. Be I, I think that whoever is in charge of the license should hire a team of fans super fans yes that <laughs> would not let anything like this like the shitty stuff that amazon did like fly by yeah. and just like actually curate the stuff that comes out that way it will be like if tolkien himself was writing it because you uh, like and they, they definitely like tried to get the same vibe that the Lord of the Rings gives, especially with like the Harfoot and the visitor interactions. Um, but they it felt failed. Like it at the end. They failed. Huh? At the end it felt like it. But I felt like they were trying the whole time to 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 at least somewhat capture that vibe. Yeah, I don't know. I, guess. I, guess. I don't know. Actually, you know, um as you said, you you kind of wish for like discretion. A little bit uh there was another announcement about video games where they said there's going to be four video games coming out in the next year like lord of the rings games four? which sounds that's all sounds lot. wild sounds like way too many that is like insane. none of them are going to be good if there's going to be four of them in one year you know i think Gollum counts in in that four but i mean but when i saw that i was like Gollum when they announced the ps5 like it's been announced for a long time. It's still not out, right? Yeah. And then, no, it's still not out. And they, they recently said something like, you know, there's going to be four games in the next year. And I was like, that That's so doesn't many. sound realistic or like a good idea at all. Like, Could it be that they're going to, because I, so you remember, what's it, last month, Hi-Fi Rush came out, like out of nowhere. Uh -huh. Could it be like an Xbox thing where they're like, it's out now, like on Game Pass? And it it could be, but they would have had to have been deliver like developing these games in secret, basically. Yes. Yeah. All, all we know about is Gollum, I think. Unless it's you know, it could be like a like a Square Enix thing where they're like, we have a new game, and everyone's like, awesome. And they're like, it's it's this mobile, uh, it's this mobile <laughs> game, uh, it's free, and you you pay microtransactions to to do this. So it might be a bunch of stuff like that. Who knows? And I'm gonna get random ads for it on Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat. Yeah. Yay. You're you're the target audience. Watch there be a Battle Lord, Mordor. A, a Lord of the Rings direct <laughs> and uh you see uh Peter Jackson just standing there, just and now enjoy this game. And that's a press it's a whole Nintendo direct, but Lord of the Rings. I will watch yeah. that. I would really watch Oh that. yeah, for sure. So anything else you guys want to bring up about Lord of the Rings, about Middle Earth, about the franchise, anything else before we uh, wrap up? Have you two ever, I feel like this is a dumb question. I feel like I already know the answer, but we got to say it out loud for the listeners. Have you two ever watched all the extended editions in a row, like in one sitting? Yes, we have. I made him. I've done it many many times i think i only <laughs> successfully got him to like really sit down and pay attention to it once because i wanted you to mm -hmm. see every single right but yeah. you you've sat you've caught bits and pieces yeah. of it other than that one time and then i i tried to make his parents sit through the whole extended edition set back <laughs> at christmas and then i saw a tiktok explaining if you want to get somebody into the lord of the rings do not start 
with the extended editions, and I understood his logic, but it made me sad. Mm. Have you? My, my dad was into it. Oh, yeah, he was, but your mom was not. My, my mom was <laughs> lost the entire time. I think she's going to try to rewatch mm. it, and she's going to be lost the entire time again. Yes, it's okay. <laughs> um, I have done that. I, um, My freshman year in college, I lived in the dorms, and uh, on Martin Luther King Day, we had no classes, but like it's not a long holiday where people leave. So we, we took over the dorm lobby and watched all the extended editions in a row, like all 13 hours or whatever. That's amazing. And it was just it was like 17 people in this like dorm room lobby, people coming and going. We just sat there and watched it and like ate pizza and stuff all day long. It was the best. That's what I want to do for my birthday this year. Can we just have a bunch of people over and watch the Lord of the Rings together and eat snacks? Am I going to be the one that has to cook? Yes. <laughs> Am I going to have to make Lambo's bread? Yes. And <laughs> wait on me all day. And, well, the problem is that I you don't eat everything they eat in Middle Earth because you We don't can have eat, charcuterie and Lambo's. You don't eat uh, Cornish hens. I don't. And I'm not really a big fan of like roast. <laughs> Anywho, we'll, we'll, we so, got yeah, time to plan I'll this. Just give you some raw fish. We have and several months. Um, but have you watched all of the extra behind the scenes footage that is on those extended editions um i can't tell you for sure so probably not i have <laughs> okay we get it you're a fan you're a bigger fan than both of us yeah, yeah it's a problem i could have i could have guessed is is there cool stuff like oh, you mean yeah. is it like you mean like cast interviews and stuff because uh, yeah. i have watched some of that it's awesome yeah. and uh, just like little bits and pieces of actual footage of them Filming and is, whatnot, and huh? Is the extended editions where that one video of Dominic Monaghan interviewing Elijah Wood is from? Where it's like, oh, you were the kid in Flipper, and Elijah's like, yeah. I'm pretty sure. And he's like, <laughs> well, that dolphin died in a car accident. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> and like Andy Circus explains how he came up with the Gollum voice from his cat hurling up a, a hairball. Fur- yep, exactly. <laughs> that was wonderful. That's how the world learned about uh, Vigo breaking his toe. Hmm. Oh yeah, yep. the uh, the ultimate Somewhere. Doki Doki fact. Oh, mm-hmm. that, Siri hears me. <laughs> yeah, it's there's there's that, and then the uh, the story about how uh, oh, what's his name Peter Jackson was trying to explain to Christopher Lee how, the the sound someone makes when they get stabbed yes! in the lung. That story too. Yes. Um, although I did I did recently see a video of that um, that interaction, and that was kind of cool. It was awesome. And that there's some really sad bits in the, the Hobbit extended editions and like how Ian McKellen, Sir Ian McKellen almost quit because he was just so, he was struggling so much with being alone the whole time. Yeah. In front of the green screen. Mm -hmm. Like he, like he, he said that he like, he felt like crying constantly. I was like, the poor guy, like that makes me want to cry hearing him be so sad. Broke my heart. Poor McNeedle. Like, fuck you, Peter. Why are you doing CGI for everything? (laughs) everything (laughs) anywho yeah okay so uh i think this was a really good kickoff for middle earth march same same awesome we have a a very very good month packed with a lot of lord of the rings nonsense and it is going to be a great time now if you want to have uh an even better time or a time of the same caliber, I suggest you listen to Dave's podcast, which Dave is going to tell us all about right now. Actually, you have two podcasts, correct? I do have two podcasts, which is one too many, in my opinion. Bless it. Maybe two too many. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so I'm the host of Tales from the Backlog. That's my kind of main podcast. That is uh, every week is a different game review um, although, as the name might suggest, it's it's games from the backlog. It's not new releases most of the time. Uh, so, like, uh, I think I I don't know when this episode is coming out uh, that we're on right now. So it's coming out. Well, it'll come out before ours. So b- b- before okay. Eastward. So it's coming out. Okay. Well, it's Monday so, right now when you're listening to this. Okay. Cool. So in a couple of days, there's going to be an episode with me and Chris talking about Eastward, which is a game that came out. Uh, like two years ago now. Mm -hmm. So kind of a backlog game. It's on Game Pass now. Um, And each episode, uh, we'll use Eastward as an example. Each episode is a deep dive breakdown 
talking about the story, the characters, the game mechanics, the music, the graphics, all that stuff, but with no spoilers for a while. So if you haven't played Eastward, you don't want to be spoiled, but you still want to listen to like a, a deep level conversation about it. You can listen to the show. And then there's a spoiler wall where we warn you, like, you know, get out if you don't want to be spoiled. And then you can you can tap out then. So that's Tales from the Backlog. Um, my advice is to go through the show, uh, listen to the one with, on Eastward because it's really good. Um, but go through, find a game, either a game you have played and want to hear people talk about, or find a game that you have not played that you want to hear people talk about, but you're afraid of getting spoiled because that's like... That's what the show's about, basically, is for that. I recommend, because we have a lot of Yakuza Like a Dragon fans, that they listen oh, yeah. to the Like a Dragon episode. Oh, yeah, with Rick from Pixel Project Radio. That, Great episode. That is a very good episode. Like, I was at work, and I was like, I wish I could be sitting right now in front of my TV playing this game again. Uh, uh -huh. the shovel night <laughs> so the shovel night episode came out while i was on a trip to california and i had my ps vita mm -hmm. so i was listening to your show while i was playing shovel night on the airport so nice. I, I was like scratching yeah. the itch as the itch came up that's great uh -huh. and i would say it's a good feeling the unsighted episode was pretty good too that game is fan fucking tastic and more people need to play it nice and yeah, I agree. That one, uh, that one was with Nave uh, from Gaming Together, and Nave is a force of nature. Every every podcast that he's on is awesome. So that that's a good time, and I agree. That game is super cool. It does some really like really interesting stuff with its um its time mechanic yep, there. That's... So that's Tales from the Backlog. I have another show called a Top Three Podcast, which is much more simple. We just do top three lists, uh, but I think that shows a good time. Um, and that's my chance to podcast about things that are not video games. Uh, and this this episode too, the one you're listening to right now, love getting the chance to come on and talk about Lord of the Rings. And yet we we talked about video games, Chris, because of course we did. You and me, we love video games. <laughs> yeah. But um, the uh, the um, the chance to talk about Lord of the Rings and uh, something that's not like something that's not video games most of the time. I, I really like this. Uh, this opportunity. So I want to thank you both for inviting me on. Yeah, of no. course. Thank you for joining us. Any, anytime you want fun. to come on, you're more than welcome to. And hell we yeah. Can awesome. Talk games, books, food, just sit down and talk for an hour about whatever. Cause we do like to do nonsense episodes. <laughs> Those are super mm -hmm. easy to do. And they're, <laughs> they're, they tend to be the most entertaining sometimes. Yeah. It's, we just talk, <laughs> talk stupid shit for an hour. <laughs> so mm -hmm. anytime, man, anytime you're welcome. Appreciate it. Yep. So I, I'm going to put um, Dave's links um, in the description. So you guys just have to check out the show notes. You're going to see everything there. Uh, just go check out his stuff. Highly recommended. And uh, don't forget that on Wednesday, we will have the, uh, um, I'm sorry, I'm blanking, Eastwood Back, episode. Oh, wait, that. <laughs> the Eastwood episode. Eastward. Yes, it will be out everywhere you get your podcast and we, yeah we forgot the backlog results but we'll do them <laughs> next week. give them another week to vote <laughs> so <laughs> all right so uh that's it for this week's episode of a novel console uh dave do you want to say goodbye to everyone bye everyone Karen, do you want to say goodbye to everyone goodbye everyone goodbye everyone <laughs>